Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. Uh, we are going to be going into part four of Tablet Three of the Emerald Tablets. Again, this is part four of Tablet Three, not part one. So we're going to be starting off today on Tablet Twenty. Or excuse me, Verse Twenty Three of Tablet Three. And um, we for this for this tablet we're using the uh, translation from Rebecca Marina Messenger. Uh, usually, I use Doriel's uh, translation and commentary on the Emerald Tablets, but I really like uh, Rebecca Marina Messenger because in this translation of tablet, she I just have the book on our tablet three. I think she has books on all of them, but I just have the tablet three one. I think she I like I like how she uses um thoth's wife or his his divine feminine she shot in this as well and i like her modern commentary now again i think there's probably going to be even more parts to tablet three because this is a really heavy tablet now i know that if you were to read it all together and not break it down it probably wouldn't seem that but there's a lot of information being shared here tablet one and tablet two are more of a who what where when and why who is thought what happened to the fall of atlantis all that kind of stuff what are the halls of amente x y and z tablet three however is called the secret key to the emerald or this the keys of wisdom basically she titled it the secret key sorry i was reading her it's the keys of wisdom which is tablet three or basically in modern commentary, it's how not to be an asshole. And so I would highly suggest going back and re-listening to all the parts before this. If you have not done so, I will include them in the description box below for you. And as always, as I always suggest, go ahead and get your own copy. Because as we know from the Emerald Tablets, the more and more and more you read them and the more you study them, the more the, the frequency of the tablets comes into your frequency. Now, I know that in our community, there's a lot of conversation about whether Thoth or Thoth, depending on how you say his name. There's many different uh, ways to say his name. There's a lot of conversation about, a lot of chatter about whether he was good or bad. And I'm going to tell you right now that if you think you need tarot cards to know if Thoth is good or bad, then you might be an idiot. Because, and I mean that in the most loving way possible, like bless your heart. Because to know if somebody is good or bad, why don't you just read their work? Why don't you just read the Emerald Tablets and see what they have to say? And then make up your own mind. Thoth never called himself a god. Billy Carson is big on this. Thoth never said he was a god. If somebody else is calling Thoth a god, then that's them probably trying to harness his energy. Thoth is a teacher. He has said that countless, countless, countless times. He's a son of Atlantis. That's it. He's just like us. He's, he's an, a more enlightened being. But he was a being a human just like we are, okay? And if you want to know if his intentions are good or bad or not, again, just read the damn Emerald Tablets for yourself. I mean, seriously. Hold on one second. This is Doriel's copy of the Emerald Tablets that I usually read from, except for we're doing Tablet 3 with Rebecca Marina Messenger. And look how, look how thin it is, guys. It's it's seriously not complicated to read this, just to pick it up and read it for yourself so that you can make your own mind up. And in fact, Thoth even talked about that, I think, in the third or earlier in the third tablet, where he says, don't judge someone by what someone else says about them. Get to know that person yourself and make your own mind up. So take that advice. Read Thoth's teaching. Everything that Thoth is telling you is you are loved. You are an infinite being. You are a soul. The darkness, if you can embrace the shadow work, if you can embrace your own struggles in life, you can use that to help yourself evolve and, and, and generate wisdom, which is where wisdom comes from, right? Wisdom, you know, you look at these like fundy people, these fundamentalists, they're not wise. They're again assholes. Wise people are people who've been through some shit and they've learned from it and they've humbled themselves and they're able to use their opportunities in their life to experience situations to to better themselves and therefore hopefully help other people down the same path. Thoth is also teaching you how to love each other. 
and, and you know, if you were joining us last week or for Aquarius Rising Africa, it's all about how incredible the human soul is. That the human soul is so powerful that it can overcome darkness. These are all parallels with the teachings of Yeshua ben Yosef, which is more commonly known as Jesus, which again, Jesus was not his name. The name Jesus actually means Hail Satan. Just let you guys know that Yeshua ben Yosef was his actual name. Yeshua, no, it does not translate to, jo to, to Jesus. It translates to Joshua because the J sound did not exist back in that time is Yeshua or Joshua. And this is exactly what he was saying to love each other, be kind to each other, understand that you are a soul. You are an eternal soul and that God loves you and understand that your soul will never die. It will just keep moving. It will keep, as I, as I said with Catherine Edwards um, on Thursday, like the reason why I believe in reincarnation basically comes down to the mere fact that energy cannot be trans, uh, excuse me, energy cannot be uh, destroyed or created. It can only be transmuted. So when the body dies, the soul has to go somewhere. The energy of the body has to go somewhere. It has to transmute into something else that's scientific. And so this is what Thoth is talking about. All the lives that we live are leading us to this point of understanding ourselves or knowing our own souls for the soul to know itself. So again, I'm going to tell you, if you think that you need to pull tarot cards to understand that, to know if thought is good or bad, instead of just using your damn critical thinking skills in your brain and read the Emerald Tablets for yourself, then I fear there is no hope for humanity. And if that you're one of those people, I would really ask that you sit, have a good sit down and a good hard look at yourself and really consider like, do I need to be asking tarot cards this or can I use my own critical thinking skills by our, our rent, you can find PDFs online for free of the Enroll tablets and read them for myself and so make up my own mind. I don't need a tarot card reader telling me if thought is good or bad. I can read the Enroll tablets for myself. You are smart. You are intelligent. God gave you critical thinking skills for a reason. Stop falling for the lies. Stop falling for the bullshit. Okay? You want to know if Thoth was good or bad or not, read the Emerald Tablets for yourself and make up your own mind. All right. A little pep talk there. With that being said, I know why that particular tarot card said Thoth was bad. I know why. Because Thoth did a whole verse about how gossip is low vibrational and is of the darkness. And that's all that tarot card channel is is just gossip it's it's bullshit it's nothing it's all fantasy it's all made up stories and gossip about people to try to smear people so um and spell casting too but uh so that's why that person doesn't like thoth is because thoth called her out on her bullshit so there you go and that person doesn't like when people question them or call them out for their bullshit all right so tablet three verse 23 create through invisible light Hark ye, O oh man, and list to this wisdom, where do name and form cease? Only in consciousness, invisible, an infinite force of radiance bright. The forms that you create by brightening thy vision are truly effects that follow thy cause. Thoth's Commentary in Modern English. When does a man cease to identify himself by only his name and his physical body? It is only in spirit, mind, or consciousness that man can create those things in which he desires. Now, we spoke about this on Aquarius Rising Africa last week. This is a huge part. This is a huge crux of the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. And we've talked a lot about this on this channel. And of course, if you are taking the yoga intensive with me, or if you would like to take the yoga intensive online intensive with me, I will put a link to that down in the description box below with Emmy and me. Emmy covers the Reiki. I cover the yoga and we go deep into this philosophy. And, and of course, Patanjali is saying that man's suffering, the human condition of man is because man is confused. Man does not understand. He's confused about who he really is. So we as humans think that who we really are, is our physical body and our identity in this life. But that's not who we really are. Who we really are is our soul. Now the suffering comes is because the physical body and the identity of the body, so for me that would be 
a female, almost 40 year old female named Bryce. So that's, that's my nature. That's the, as he says, the, where do the name and form cease? So the name and the form, the name is Bryce. The form is a, a white female from Atlanta, Georgia. So at some point that identity ceases to be right. And, and that day will come when, and when it's my last day, when I pass away, right. Which no spoiler alert there, right. We're all going to die. Our bodies are going to die. Right. And so if our bodies are, and our, our names and our lives will eventually ashes to ashes, dust to dust will eventually be no more. Then it can't be real, but we think it's real. And so because we know, because we think it's real, but yet we know it's not forever, we hold on to it very tightly. And so when things shift and change and we get older, we start to suffer because we're trying to hold, it's like holding sand in your hand. The sand just slips through your fingers, right? It's not permanent. So what is permanent? What is permanent is the soul, is the invisible light, the fire, the the verses, he also spoke about these verses, the fire, which fire is often referred to as the soul in multiple scriptures, including the Bible, the fire. And so, and that is the soul will then leave the, the body and go into another property. It will transmute into another form. So reincarnation or whatever, it goes elsewhere and creates another, another body to reside in. Now, if you go deeper into spiritual work, as we're doing in our shadow work challenge, and if you want a template for the shadow work challenge that starts this Saturday, the 21st, that email address is down in the description box below. But that is the point of quote unquote shadow work, right? Is that you are leaning into your wounds. You're leaning into the things that bother you that are usually associated with the property, with the nature, the body, the life, right? The obstacles created in this life because the soul is pure love and pure bliss and pure consciousness. These things you struggle with are not a part of your soul. It's just a part of the obstacle for the soul to know itself. And so that's why shadow work is so important because you bring yourself to the brink of, of, of mental strain and mental struggle to create that friction. So again, the, the match has everything it needs to light, but it needs to brush itself up against the striking of the match, the matchbox in order to have that light. That's how the soul knows itself is through the obstacles of the body. And that's what he's saying here. It's the exact same thing. The soul, your soul is what created you. Your soul is what designed your existence for the soul to know itself. So the invisible is what created the visible. I hope that makes sense. Let me know if that's confusing to you and I will try to elaborate more on that. All right, expand your vision to express the divinity that you are. She Shat contributes her wisdom. Trying to create only from the physical realm will not get you where you are longing to go. Those things created with light and power from within are the things beyond mere physical. As I was just saying, all things that are created in physical form were first visioned in the mind and spirit. Again, yes, the soul, your body, as we often say on this channel, your body is the Shakti of the soul. It's the creation of the soul, the Shakti, right? And so the, the, the soul is the Shiva. The body is the Shakti. The Shiva and the Shakti are constantly doing this tango. They're constantly doing this dance together. And when this Shakti is done, it will go back into the earth and a new Shakti will be created and envisioned by the soul. And so we hear things like soul contracts. That's a big, big phase in, in the spiritual world that your soul makes a contract with this, the experience of life, right? Of what it's going to learn in this life. And so that's what your soul is creating. So my soul decided that I needed to be a white woman in Georgia for whatever reason to experience certain obstacles and experiences in this body through these families to learn something and the opportunities handed to me from the path of the karmic connection through my family line because family line is also karmic. That's another thing that's different. I know last week we talked a little bit about Scientology. Scientology also teaches reincarnation. But I've heard many scientists just say that like when you die, you go up and you get amnesia and then you just float around and jump into a baby at the hospital. That's not at all what true spirituality teaches. True spirituality teaches that you literally make soul agreements with other people and you pick your parents. So it's not just floating around looking for a, a baby body at the hospital. No, it's actually knowing full well 
who you're, I mean, I'm sure my soul already knows who my parents are going to be in the next life too. You know, there's these contracts, this domino effect of karmic and all karma is, is work. It's action and reaction. It's friction. There are these domino reaction of lessons learned, you know, to that I've, that I've agreed with my parents. You agreed with your parents, with your children, with your spouses, with your friends. That's all that is. And so I, again, I hope that makes sense. And that's where Scientology and true spirituality totally differ from each other. Another, there's many places where they split, but I just kind of wanted to bring that up. Every time I hear a Scientologist talk about that, I think that's hysterical because there is no spirit. It's not just like coincidental. You're just dropping into a body because you see it. No, there it's way more complicated than that. There's way more finer detail to that than just that idea that you're just dropping in. Right. All right. So all things are created in physical form or first vision in the mind and spirit. Yet physical forms are required to sustain life. Seek first your inner guidance and bright will be the path before you. So the, the soul does not need substance to sustain its life. Only the physical body does. Makes sense, right? We need food. We need breasts. We need all sorts of stuff. Sunshine, all sorts of stuff to, to maintain our life. Because our life is is vulnerable and our, we have mortality, right? So, so, yeah, so the soul doesn't need that kind of stuff because the soul is immortal, but the body is mortal. And so there has to be upkeep with the body, feeding it, watering it, resting it, all that kind of stuff. You will find it far easier to at attain all your goals by starting from the unconscious level. Heed the callings of the bright flame in your heart. So listen to your heart. Listen to your gut, right? Tablet 3, verse 24, we are stardust. Man is a star bound in a body. Until in the end, he is freed through his strife. Only by struggle and toiling thy utmost shall the star within thee bloom out in new life. For he who knows the commencement of all things, free is his star from the realms of night. Basically everything I just said, right? So basically this is exactly what I just talked about. Only by struggling and toiling the utmost shall the star within thee bloom out new life. That's the enlightenment, right? That's why the lotus flower is used in yoga. It moves through the mud and muck up to bloom. It's only through the friction. It's only through the hard stuff that we change, that we understand that the soul starts to know itself. It's only through suffering. It's like, again, um, David Greek, my original teacher. He said one time he was in India and he asked Guruji, Guruji, is the pain in this practice necessary? Because the Ashtanga practice can be pretty fucking painful. And Guruji said, yes, because pain is real. Pain is real. It's necessary. It's necessary. Pain brings a level of honesty, of vulnerability, of truth. And resurrection. Thoughts, commentary in modern English. Mankind is composed of elements from the stars. As he transitioned from this earthly form, the star is released. Soul. In his life, he may struggle to attain awareness of the light within his own star. Again, yes, he struggles to find the awareness because, as Patanjali says in the Yoga Sutra, that's man's condition of suffering. He doesn't realize that the star... The light inside of him is actually what's really him. He thinks that who he is in his nature is him. When the, who he is in his nature is just an expression of the soul. It's not the soul itself. As mankind realizes the progression of his evolution, he becomes aware of the starlight within and is free from all darkness. As he realizes that star power was within him all along, so shall he ever be free, even in his physical lifetime. And this is what uh, Patanjali speaks about this as well, that once you actually really viscerally understand that your soul is what's real and your body is just a temporary experience, you can really start to enjoy life because you don't fear death anymore. You're free from the, the chains of the bondage of death because you understand death is nothing but just retiring an old body, an old outfit in order to pick up a new one. She shat contributes her wisdom. Humanity is compromised of the elements of space. Contributions from every star species inhabits your DNA. You presume that you must struggle and toil to attain the light, and yet you already are the light, right? That's the soul knowing itself, right? As you become aware of the forward progression of, of all things, so too shall you embrace your own light. And so 
Rebecca Marina Messenger does have a little exercise here in this chapter, which she does from time to time in her uh, book on the uh, Emerald Tablet. So she says, relax. Imagine that you are in a void of darkness far off among the stars. Stillness is everywhere and peace is in your heart. Look at the blue black void around you. See the twinkling stars of every color. Hold aloft your arm. See that it too is blue black. Look closely and see the reflection of the stars within your own body. Merge with the stars. Feel them lightening up your DNA responses. Feel the spinal column fluid as it surges throughout the nervous system, releasing this message. We are star royalty. We are light. As we see our relation to the stars, we give ourselves permission to grow stronger in this light. There's great value in contemplating the light within each cell. This practice builds your power to create. Have patience with the process. Yes, perhaps it is a new thing for you, contemplating your own starlight. Yet, it is an amazingly effective way for awakening ancient memories, which is why you are attracted to the Emerald Tablets in the first place. Knowing that you are starlight will help you to remember who you are. Tablet 3, verse 25. Everything in the universe changes. Yes, because that's the rule of nature, right? It's anything that has a birth, a life, and a death is also destined to change. Remember, O oh man, that all which exists is only another form of that which exists not. Everything that has a being is passing into yet other being, and thou thyself are not an exception. Again, energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can only be transmuted. So you're always moving into other, transforming and transmuting into other lights. Thoughts, commentary, and modern English. Everything that is, has been in another form at one time. All that is now is currently passing into another form. All matter and non-matter are forms of energy. Energy simply changes its composition and vibratory rate. You and your physical body and mind are constantly changing with time. One day you will leave the physical form to be one with the earth. Ashes to ashes. Shishat contributes her wisdom. All is created by thought first. So anything created by man was once a thought. Yoga Chitavriti Narodaha. So again, that's the second sutra of the yoga sutras in Sanskrit. Chittam is brain, vritti is mind thought. So vibrational, it's like dropping a pebble in a lake and the, the, the waves flickering out. It's the vibration that comes out of thought, yeah? In nature, a seed becomes a tree, a cloud turns into rain, and a stream emerges as a mighty river. All is constantly changing. Humanity is constantly changing, even when you think you are staying still. The continual change is referred to to by one of the immutable laws of the universe the law of perpetual transmission of energy everything is constantly changing some changes are not noticed as they are occurring at a cellular or atomic level but they are changing nonetheless and yes we are repeating some of these verses from last week because i think it's really important to repeat some of this stuff and since we are taking a deeper discussion with aquarius rising africa super important all right, don't go breaking the law from tablet three, verse 26. Consider the law for all is law. Seek not that which not the law. For such exists only in illusions of the senses. Thoughts commentary in modern English. There is a universal law that applies to every situation and every being. It is only an illusion. To think that the universal law does not apply to you. Karma applies to everyone. There are some people that think they're going to be able to get out of their karma. When you try to go against natural law, it is only imaginary quests with no substance. Shishat contributes her wisdom. Ponder the laws of the universe when making decisions about your life. There is no need to search a law book for the laws that govern humanity are already written in the walls of your own heart. As we have said time and time again, follow the wisdom that you already know to be true. It is easy when you go within and heed the promptings of your own soul. Tablet 3, verse 27, wisdom comes to all who seek. 
Wisdom cometh to all her children, even as they cometh unto wisdom. Thoughts commentary in modern English. As you seek wisdom, wisdom is seeking you. Wisdom is eager to find a home within you. Shishak contributes her wisdom. I refer again to the laws of the universe, the law of attraction. That which is like unto itself is drawn to itself. Or even more plainly, like attracts like. Wisdom is seeking the seeker, even as the seeker is seeking wisdom. Hidden Mysteries from Tablet 3, verse 28. Through all the ages, the light has been hidden. Awake, O man, and be wise. Deep in the mysteries of life have I traveled, seeking and searching for what, for that which is hidden. List ye, O man, and be wise. So thoughts, commentary, and modern English. Throughout all time, light has been something to search for. Listen to my words of wisdom. That which is most value must be sought after. I have traveled through many dimensions, seeking out the mysteries far too enormous to put into a small text. Yet, as you seek wisdom and follow your guidance, you too shall be wise and see greater mysteries. Shishak contributes her wisdom. You have the capacity to take in the light through the magnificence of your heart and its magnetic field. This is one of the greatest hidden mysteries of all, for after traveling through the cosmos, my beloved Thoth stated that he found no greater mystery than that found in the heart of man. And we have a reference here to Tablet 1, verse 15 of the original Enmal Tablets. Free was I of the halls of Amente, bound not by death to the circle of life. Far to the stars I journeyed until space and time became naught. Then having drunk deep of the cup of wisdom, I looked into the hearts of men, and there I found greater mysteries and was glad. For only in the search for truth could my soul be stilled and the flame within be quenched. Tablet 3, verse 29. Man's heart is full of light. Far neath the earth's crust in the halls of Amente, mysteries I saw that are hidden from men. Oft have I journeyed the deep hidden passage, looked on the light that is life among men. There near the flower of life ever living, searched I the hearts and secrets of men, found that a man is but living in darkness, light of the great fire is hidden within. Thoughts commentary in modern English. The halls of Amente lie deep beneath the earth's crust. I traveled there many times and looked upon the flower of life that gives and sustains life. There I searched and contemplated the hearts of men. I found that man does not recognize his own great fire as it is within him. Shishak contributes her wisdom. Again, Thoth, my beloved, is speaking of the hearts of man. Although he lived many lifetimes and traveled to the halls of Amente each time, he is st still found that man does not recognize the capacity for light that is already within him. All right, so this is building up to actually around where we left off last week. I wanted to repeat some of that because we're going to get into the different frequencies here, which also, again, associate with the chakra system. The seven lords of frequencies from Tablet 3, verse 30. Before the lords of hidden amente learned I the wisdom I give unto men. Masters are they of the great secret wisdom brought from the future of infinity's end. Seven are they, the lords of amente, overlords they of the children of morning, sons of the cycles, masters of wisdom. Formed are they not that they are children of men. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine are the titles of the masters of men. Thoth's commentary in modern English. It was the lords of hidden amente, a place of power and renewal that I thought learned of many mysteries. The seven lords are masters of great wisdom, overlords of the children of mourning, sons of the cycles. They are the masters of wisdom. These seven overlords, these seven overlords are not formed as men, but are composed of frequencies of light and vibration, which is remember in the beginning. That's how Thoth said that he sees souls. He sees souls as light. Some lights shine brighter than others, depending on how much work the soul has done to know itself. So that, that makes sense that these, these, these energies that are affiliated with different chakra, points of chakra systems in the body are just light and vibration. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine are the titles of these masters. They govern and rule over various dimensions. Their names and frequencies are Untanas, three, the third dimension, Hortus, four, the fourth dimension. Chaitel, five, the fifth dimension. Guyana, six, the sixth dimension. Hurtal, seven, the seventh dimension. Samvita, the eighth dimension. And Ardal, the ninth dimension. 
I hope I said those names right. These numbers and names represent the dimensions and powerful frequencies therein. This is why the numbers begin with three instead of one. Three is the third dimension with its own frequency. That also makes sense with the law of one because the third density is the place of polarity where we start to make the decision where we use the polarity of darkness and light, good, bad, whatever you want to call it, to create fi friction to uh, know ourselves, right? And to make the choices of whether we want to go down the path of service to others, which is the positive path or service to self, which is the darker negative path. Each of the seven lords has their own frequency, yet they work together as one unit in their capacity to rule the spheres and dimensions. Shishat contributes her wisdom. Having a panel of overlords, each with his own power, yet working together as a whole, ensures fairness and equal powers in all dimensions. You may call upon one or all of these frequency lords to be of assistance to you. They relate also to the human chakra system. Untanas three, the crown chakra, Putaras four, the third eye chakra, Shaitel five, the throat chakra, Goyana six, the heart chakra, Hertal seven, the solar plex chakra, Samvita eight, the sexual chakra, and Ardal nine, the root chakra. It is greatly beneficial to touch each of your chakras while repeating the names of the specific lord. So that might be a good exercise to do on your own. And I will actually write the names uh, down in the description box below. If you want to practice doing that on your own, you can just look in the description box to get the names. Tablet 3, verse 31, back from the future. Far from the future, formless yet forming, came they, they as teachers for the children of men. Live they forever, yet not of the living, bound not to life, and yet free from death. Rule they forever with their infinite wisdom, bound yet not bound to the dark halls of death. Life they have in them, yet life that is not life, free from all are the lords of all. Thoth's Commentary in Modern English. These seven lords have come back in time from the future to teach us. Because they are pure frequencies, they cannot die as we know death. They rule the dimension forever with infinite wisdom. It is their choice, acting as a bond that keeps them as teachers of men, yet they do have life, but not life as we experience it. They are completely free of all dimensional ties, yet they choose to say to be a balance for all of this humanity, so they don't have any karmic ties. Shishak contributes her wisdom. Simply knowing the names of the seven lords of frequencies is a valuable tool. As you call upon the names... The frequencies they govern begin to vibrate within your bodies. There is much about you. That is the, the realm of the unseen. Becoming more aware of your frequency state at each moment is a sign of your evolution. You need not understand it with your logical mind. Be open to understanding and more will come to you. The seven lords came back to you from the future to teach you in the ways of the frequency and light. Call upon them often for help in adjusting your frequencies to higher and higher realms. Relax and let this be easy. Do not fret or overanalyze, but a question, always question. It is a poor teacher who does not encourage his students to ask questions. Have patience and knowledge will be awakened within your heart. Trust that your heart will always guide you to truth. The Logos, Tablet 3, Verse 32. Forth from them came forth the Logos, instrument they use of the power over all, vast as their continents, yet hidden in smallness, formed by a forming known yet unknown. Thoth's Commentary in Modern English. From the seven lords of frequencies came forth the principle of divine reason and creative order. These lords of frequencies are instruments of power over all things in this and other dimensions. Although they are great, it is only as one seeks them in the stillness of the heart that they may be found. All that power is inside of you, right? You are lightning in the bottle. You are the storm. They sometimes take on forms of existences as needed, yet much unknown wisdom is still to be revealed. Shishat contributes her wisdom. Divine reason, creative order, and the laws are as one. Yes, these lords have great power, yet they hide in the very place in which one would not think to look. 
Within each human is a set of genetic materials that can be activated by reciting the names of the lords and calling forth their power. This is an incredible power that cannot be used for evil. The law of vibration is alive in them as it is alive in you. The law of vibration. All particles of all substances are in constant movement. The lords may appear as human for a cause. Their vibrations are always in movement even as they may appear to be still. Frequency Lord Tanus 3 from Tablet 3, verse 33. Three holds the key of all hidden magic. Creator he of the halls of the dead, sending forth power, shroud with darkness, binding the souls of the children of men. Sending the darkness, binding the soul force, director of negative to the children of men. Thoughts commentary in modern English. The Lord Three, Aruntanas, holds the key of hidden magic for this dimension. For humanity is still in a third dimension. Lord Untanus is associated with the crown chakra. Yes, Untanus created the halls of the dead, which refers to a place of rest and rejuvenation. This is not a hellish realm as some suppose. This is referring to a place between lives or the other side. Isn't that interesting? When we die, he's saying, we get to rest and rejuvenate before entering a new life. It's a very interesting way to look at death, isn't it? A vacation, basically, before taking life again. But of course, organized religion like the church would want you to fear death because then when you fear death, you'll give them more money and you'll give them more of your power over your mind. They may also be referred to as the angel of death, yet fear not the angel of death, for he takes you safely to a place of rest. You will always be reincarnated until you evolve to a place of knowledge. This is the hidden magic, realizing that you can request all of this lifetime's memories to be brought forward into the next. Shishat contributes her wisdom. You can request to spend your next lifetime on a planet of your cho choosing. This is also a hidden magic. Take more care when choosing the next lifetime and what you desire to experience therein. Many are so hungry for growth that they forget to give themselves a lifetime of ease somewhere. The earth plane is one of the most difficult of all the realms. Choosing too many difficult lifetimes in a row can cause burnout quickly. This is one reason many light workers today feel like giving up. Who I have felt that that definitely resonates with me. I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way. Tablet three, verse 30, 34. Frequency Lord Quintaris. Four is he who loses the power. Lord, he of life to the children of men. Light is his body, flame is his countenance, freer of souls to the children of men. Thoughts commentary in modern English. Quintaris is Lord of the fourth realm. He is associated with the third eye chakra in almost every plane of existence. There is a savior, quote unquote, savior figure in Christianity. This is the Christ in Buddhism. This is Buddha, of which there are many in Islam. This is the prophet Muhammad in many relig relig religions. There are savior figures in parentheses. All savior figures have one aspect in common. They set free the souls of men and women who believe in them. Shisha contributes her wisdom, but they don't really write. We know that. You have to be your own savior. Thoth has spoken well on the fourth Lord. I would add this. There are many humans who act as savior figures for the good of mankind. They're often raised up in a position of sainthood. This is an example of how one can evolve in giant steps here on this planet. However, please note that many of these savior figures who attained sainthood suffered greatly in their lifetime. Often it was not until long after their death that their gift of humanity was recognized. A mistake occurs when one takes on too much responsibility for the growth of others and feels it is their duty to save them for their journey. It's not your duty to save anyone. You can't save anyone. You can only save yourself. It is important to always respect the soul plan of another. Exactly. You may think you know for sure what is good for someone else and fight to take, make them over in your mold. That is a very narcissistic, negatively aspected trait. You can only offer your services you're teaching your advice but you can't force anybody to take it because they have their own soul plan and trying to force someone listen 
God's not going to tell you the action plan for another person. God's not going to tell you what another person needs to do. If you feel like God is telling you what another person needs to do, then you're not hearing from God. You're hearing from your ego. Okay. As a yoga teacher, I can only offer my students uh, the path of yoga, the path of Ashtanga yoga. I can't force them to take it. Nor do I want to. Keep your eyes steadfast upon your own soul's journey. Ver, uh, tablet 3, verse 35. Frequency Lord Chattel 5. 5 is the master, the Lord of all magic. Key to the word that resounds among men. Thoughts, commentary, and modern English. Chattel is indeed the Lord of all magic, for he is associated with the throat chakra. Speak the words that resound among men with the power of your voice. This is a seat of power that is most often overlooked by those seeking a spiritual path. So eager you are to be humble that often you do not speak your own truth. Call upon the power of this great Lord Chattel to help you find your own true power. Shishat contributes her wisdom. What magic could you create if you felt free to speak up more often? What magic could you create if you asked for what you really wanted in life instead of settling for less? Not speaking out your desires or even voicing your thoughts comes from old programming of unworthiness. As you release the bondage of your throat chakra, you will find yourself expecting more and receiving more of what you desire in your heart. An exceptionally good exercise to open your throat chakra is to chant Chattel several times daily very loudly. Then switch to, to chanting his name several times very softly. Play with this exercise until it becomes fun for you. Each time you call upon the name of this Lord, your own power grows stronger. And the Rebecca Marina Messenger gives an exercise for your desires. Switch the focus of your desires and shout them out as commandments to the universe. I desire and expect to receive. Insert your desire. Play with all the ways that you can use your voice in this exercise, be sure to resist any temptation to whine or justify why you have the desire. You are worthy to desire anything without having to explain to any deity or person why you desire it. Get accustomed to hearing your own voice speaking your desires out loud. Tablet 3, verse 36. Frequency, Lord, Goyana. Six is the Lord of light, the hidden pathway, the path of souls of the children of men. Thoth's commentary in modern English. Six, Lord of Light indeed, for his name is Guayana, and he's, he's associated with the heart chakra. The heart is the hidden pathway that so many ignore for the greatness it holds. The path of the heart is the path of your life. All that you need to know is already written there on the walls of your heart. Be still, go within, search your heart in the stillness, and that hidden pathway will be revealed to you. Shishat contributes her wisdom. In all of his teachings, we have been speaking over and over about the wisdom of the heart. The desires of your heart are your guidance to your soul purpose. Call upon Lord Goyana to help you to open up your heart to the wisdom that is already there. True beings of light will always point you into the direction of your heart. Tablet 3, verse 37. Frequency Lord, Portal 7. 7 is he who is Lord of the vastest, master of space and the key of the times. Thoughts, commentary, and modern English. Hortel is Lord of the solar plexus chakra. Right here, right? Right where your ribs come up and make that upside down V, that's your solar plexus. Herein you will find the will of man. It's the great power, the solar plexus. This Lord is the master of all space and holds the keys of time. The human will is the master of space and time, whether man is aware of this or not. Shishat contributes her wisdom. Much good will come as you focus on strengthening your solar plexus chakra. Only you are in charge of you. As you grow in confidence that your will can be strengthened, so shall more and more good come to you. It is very discouraging to your own spiritual growth to feel as if someone or someone else is in charge of you. Perhaps in times past, you had given up your power. It is now time to take back all the power that you have mistakenly given to others. Begin by focusing on your will. Avoid giving attention to all the times in which you failed at using your will. will. Yes, acknowledge briefly past incidents, yet do not stay there. 
It does not matter what has gone gone before. Now is the time to claim your own will and the power that you have to use that power. This Lord or frequency can help you raise your own awareness. The solar plex is his domain and he seeks to be of service. Hertel, Hertel, Hertel. And remember, you are not in servitude to Hertel. His mission, his mission is to be in service to all. Do these lords of frequency a favor. Help a lord fulfill his mission. P.S. In the original tablets, Thoth, my beloved, did refer to these frequencies as lords. The lords are interchangeable, masculine, and feminine. Whatever makes you feel more comfortable, use that gender. And truth, these sound frequencies activate a sound signature that is genderless. Silently chanting the names corresponds to the frequencies within you that are already there. You simply activate more by using the power of these frequencies. Tablet 3, verse 38. Frequency Lord, Samvata 8. 8 is he who orders the progress, weighs and balances the journey of men. Thoughts, commentary, and modern English. 8 is the Lord or Governor of the sexual chakra. This is the center of creation for both male and female. His name is Samvata. Of course, the sexual chakra weighs and balances the evolution and progress of all humanity, not only human life, but animal, plant, and even e elemental lives are ruled by the power of creation. Nature itself brings a balance of evolution to all species. Many light workers are a bit ashamed of the sexual chakra, yet without a healthy sex chakra, all the other energy vortexes are cut off with barely a trinkle of light, or life rather. Indeed, the balance of this journey of all creation is found within the sexual chakra. That's also your chakra of creativity. She chat contributes her wisdom. Samvetta, 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 I can hear it now. Ringing out from the bedrooms across the globe. I will not be saying that name in the bedroom. That's weird. I don't even like it when people say each other's names in the bedroom. That makes me a little uncomfortable. Like, it makes me want to laugh. Like, no, let's not do that. <laughs> Who knew that sound frequency could activate this often ignored chakra? I will give practical use for this activation. Chanting the name Sinvetta calls more energy into any creative endeavor. Try it and you will see. This sound frequency will be extremely helpful in all areas of sexuality. Men can use the frequency to help the, with stimulation of blood flow that is essential to having a firm erection. Women can use the frequency Sinvetta to increase desire and moisten the general area. What? Are you shocked? As the author often says, spiritual information is of no value if it cannot be used to improve human life. I, Shisha, do agree wholeheartedly. You are a spiritual being experiencing a human lifetime. Take all the pleasures that you can. If the information you are studying does not help you in a practical way, look elsewhere. Tablet 3, verse 39. Frequency Lord, Lord Ardal. Nine is the father, vasty of continents forming and changing from out of the form less. Thoth's commentary in modern English. In the beginning was the root chakra. Ardal is the name and frequency of this Lord. All your connections to all of life spring from this chakra, yes. As your ancient origins still influence you in many ways, recognizing that this soul frequency of Ardal has the power to change some of the old slave mentality is one key to evolution. Shishat contributes her wisdom. To use the power of this Lord's frequency to positively influence your root chakra, do this. Place your hand on your root chakra. Ask your own inner guidance. What needs to be shifted in your primal roots? Be still and do not stress if you feel nothing. Your root chakra can hold a lot of secrets. Begin to chant the name Ardal. Feel how the sound reverberates in, within your being. Let this be easy. Each time you call upon any of these frequencies, the power is accumulated. Remember, it took eons for your root chakra to accumulate all the information that it now holds. Concentrating on cleaning one thing at a time is best. Or simply place your hand on your root chakra, chant the name or sound frequency, our doll, and ask for the highest good of all. Moving forward does not have to be difficult. And I think we'll pause it there. We'll pick up next week with a uh, verse 40 which is hidden keys again i thought we did repeat some of what we did last week because i wanted to build up going through all of the chakra system again this is perfect timing for our shadow work challenge our 60 day shadow work challenge which is coming up on saturday this coming saturday january 21st so please 
email me at the email listed below in the description box. Um, very interesting stuff. It, these emerald tablets, I'm loving them. I hope you guys are too. We will talk soon. I hope you have a wonderful day.